All right, so I have a very important question, uh, and it's a big question, so I don't want you to answer too quickly. What is the best vending machine snack? That's the question. When I was a kid, my answer, uh, my answer was, was Skittles. Okay, we've got a bunch of, of snacks here that, you know, typically would come out of, vending, of a vending machine, gum, chocolate, you know, Mentos, stuff like that. 100% without question, if I went to a vending machine growing up, Skittles in my hand was the outcome. Uh, and this is probably strange, but I loved it when the vending machine started moving and I could see those Skittles in motion. It's just so fascinating. Maybe you can relate. Um, and you know what? These days, vending machines aren't just for snacks. Uh, there are vending machines for things like coffee, uh, headphones, and even cupcakes. I've even heard, and I'm not kidding you, I've even heard of vending machines that sell acne medicine, which seems a little bit strange. It's actually very strange. But anyway, there's something that I hate about vending machines. And some of you may have experienced this too. Have you ever had that moment when you paid for something, hit the button, and then your snack got stuck? Like, I mean, is there anything worse than seeing a bag of Skittles dangling from its row, but not actually free falling to the bottom tray? The answer is no, people. There is nothing worse than holding up your end of the deal, but then not getting the thing that you expect in return. You see, last week we talked about how it can be, it can be really tough to get to know a God who is invisible uh, without making a habit out of connecting with him. And we said that even if we have the best of intentions, if we don't actually repeatedly do things that lead us to connect and relate to God, we're going to continue to feel distance because our habits matter. And like any other friendship you have, knowing God is about spending time with him and getting to know him better. Now today we're going to talk about another way to get to know God better by praying, by talking to God. And although most of us would probably say that prayer is a good idea, some of us have had experiences with prayer, like, like I had trying to get Skittles out of a vending machine where, you know, you felt, you felt like you did your part and, and your answer got stuck hanging on the rack. Just like when you put in the money and punched the right buttons but didn't get the Skittles. In the same way, some of us have experienced saying all the prayers, all the prayers, and not getting what we expected in return. And while all of us have probably prayed prayers, uh, you know, begging God to let our, our team win the game or hoping that your mom won't ask you to unload the dishwasher before you leave the house, uh, you know, w when those don't get answered, maybe it's not as big of a deal. But the stuff that can be really challenging are the, the kind of prayers that feel a little bit more personal where it feels like more is on the line by asking for it. You know, maybe, maybe you've prayed for uh, a passing grade in a class that's really hard for you, but you still didn't pass. Uh, that was me, by the way, twice in high school. Most of you have probably heard that story, so I'll save you from it. Um, but yeah, really bad. Uh, maybe you prayed about making the team and didn't. Um, Maybe it was a friend. Maybe you've been praying for a good, solid group of friends and it just hasn't happened yet. Maybe you've prayed for a sick family member to get better, but she got worse. And these are real requests that are a big deal to us. And praying, asking for help feels like putting yourself out there. And so when the prayer isn't answered, it leaves you with questions that we've probably all asked. Am I doing it wrong? Is God mad at me? Does God hear me at all? Does he care? Or, what is the point of prayer? You see, sometimes we feel like prayer doesn't work. And it isn't that we think it's a bad idea, it's that we feel like it doesn't change anything. Because when we prayed, we were hoping for one result and got a different one. You see, another reason we may struggle with prayer is because you can't see God. We can look at creation and see God at work in the world, but when it comes to having a relationship or a conversation, a connection with God, um, with a God that we can't see, it just isn't easy. We don't hear him speaking out loud. And as a result, sometimes we feel like we're talking to ourselves when we pray. Now, we have God's word, we have the Bible, and, and that is God speaking to us. Um, but I'm talking like audibly, like audibly hearing God face-to-face -face speaking 
speaking out loud. Um, it can just feel like we're talking to ourselves when we pray. Sometimes we feel like we're talking to the wall. Sometimes we want to fall asleep. Sometimes we do fall asleep. I've also done that many times. But it's okay. Prayer honestly seems difficult. <laughs> but I'm not sure that it actually has to be that way. I, I actually think that there may be a better way than giving up on it completely because it doesn't seem like it's working. And so let's talk about it. One of the most famous people in the Bible is a guy named David. And you may be familiar with him as the guy who uh, killed a giant named Goliath and eventually became the king of Israel. And if you haven't heard of him, don't sweat it. Here's what you need to know. David made some really good choices in life and he made some really bad ones too. But when it came to God, David knew him. In fact, David came to be known as what the Bible um, says, a man after God's own heart. But this didn't become true of David by accident. This was true of David because he made talking to God and spending time with God a habit right there. A lot of David's relationship with God is, is actually recorded in writing and he wrote songs and poems and prayers and, and journaled his thoughts. And, and many of those are collected in, in a book of the Bible called Psalms. Uh, and one of, in one of the Psalms or poems, uh, David, David had this to say about prayer in Psalm uh, 145 verse 18. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. You see, what this verse doesn't say is almost as good as what it does say. David doesn't say the Lord is near to good people who call on him. Or the Lord is near to people who call on him with the right combination of fancy words. No, he, he actually says that the Lord is near to all who call on him. Think about that for a second. David is saying, anytime you talk to God, you're close to God because he's close to you. Anytime you have a conversation with him, you're, de you're deepening your relationship with him. You're building a habit of spending time with God. And in this way, a habit of prayer helps us feel closer to God. And this is a big deal. Because while we do, we do, we want our prayers answered, the, the big ones and the small ones, that isn't the point of prayer. David understood that. And that's what I want us to understand today. David prayed and asked God for things. But more than anything, he valued being close to God. He valued God's presence, God being with him. Because David knew that no matter what happened when it came to getting his prayers answered the way he wanted, the thing he could always count on, the thing that mattered more than anything else, was God being close. And so he prayed in order to be close to God and not just to get what he wanted. And the same can be true for us. We can ask God for things in prayer. But to be close to God means we know that prayer isn't just a transaction, a give and take, an asking and receiving. It's about being with God, being present, God being with us, making a habit out of being together. And so when we ask the question, is God out there? Does he hear me? We can be as confident as David and believe God is close to us because that is just who he is. A God who hears and draws near to us. Even if you don't get what you want, even if you aren't sure how God will answer, there is never a question about God being near. The point is connection. But you see, that still leaves us with a question you know, even if God being close to us is the most important thing, what do we do and say in the time spent with God praying? Like, what do we, what do we say? And so thousands of years after David's life, we actually get some insight into how the Apostle Paul uh, talked, talked to God. So we're transitioning from David to, to Paul now. And so I want to turn your attention um, to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. It says this, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. 
I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And so in these couple of verses, Paul mentions uh, giving thanks, remembering people he cared about, and asking for God's wisdom to know him better. And honestly, that's covering a lot of ground. In other words, his prayers weren't all just about one thing. And when you think about it, um, that's what it's like when you, when you talk with you know, your everyday friends. You do things like laugh, um, ask questions, tell stories. Uh, you reminisce on old times, you complain, you joke, you, you tell them the real stuff that's going on in your life. See, conversations with friends happen in a lot of different ways depending on the circumstances. And this is exactly how Paul prayed to God. But the thing that is most interesting in this passage is actually what Paul doesn't pray. He doesn't pray that his friends would get everything they want. Because that's not the point. He prayed that God would help them get to know him better. You see, Paul understood that the best thing for his friend's faith wasn't for them to get everything they wanted. It was to get to know God better, to experience God with them no matter what the answer, so that no matter what they faced, they could believe in who God was, a loving, kind, and faithful God, not just a God who did what they wanted God to do. And so when you and I make a habit out of spending time with God in prayer, um, we'll actually begin to trust him more and more. And that will help us remember that no matter what we face, no matter how our prayers are answered, we aren't alone because God is with us and close to us. And that's the best thing prayer does for us. Reminds us who God is, who we are, and how we never face the world alone. Talking to God helps us know him better. You see, developing the habit of, prayer, of, of praying will help us know God better. And when we know God better, we're also better able to, to know and live out God's dream for the world. We, we actually become better representatives of his message. And so as we start to try this out in our lives, here are just a few tips on how to connect with God in a prayer habit. A couple pointers for you today. Uh, if you want to take notes, go for it. The first is this, say thanks. You see, being intentional with gratitude will make you more likely to see things you can be grateful for. And what it can do is actually open your eyes to the good in the world, the things that God is already doing. The more you say thanks, the more things um, you will see that you can say thank you for. So that's number one. Number two would be this, be honest. We don't need to talk to God like he's our principal or a government official, you know, being on our best behavior and trying to, to impress him. We can actually be real with him. Be honest about stuff you struggle with. Be real about how you're feeling about things. God, I promise you, will not strike you with lightning for not saying the right things. Um, he's a good God who cares about you and wants you to talk about stuff that's actually happening in your heart. The third is this, give praise. When we praise God for being strong, kind, or, or even trustworthy, it's a way of reminding ourselves that he is all of those things. And then on the days when it's hard to see good things happening, we can actually look back and remember all God has done in the past. And number four would be, would be this, ask. Asking God for something, you need to hear this, asking God for something is not wrong. In fact, the Bible teaches us to bring all of our requests to God. But maybe, just maybe this week, you could also try asking um, for, for someone else, maybe. Pray for your friends, your siblings, your parents, your teachers, or how about this, even your enemies. Or just pick one person, one person that comes to your mind, pray for him or her over the next couple of weeks. Um, and so, you know, by that, we, we no longer pray for just ourselves and our own um, needs, but we're actually praying for the needs of other people. So amazing. But what you need to understand today is this, prayer is not a formula. We don't do it because we get something out of it. 
Uh, we make prayer a habit because connection with God is the point. And so this week, when you, when you feel awkward about what you're saying, or you're afraid that you're doing it wrong, or you're scared that you'll hear a no from God, remember more than anything else, God wants to connect. God wants to be close. So pray, but pray to connect with him. And now here's the deal. You, you may actually not pray and feel something change right away. But imagine if over time you made a habit out of connecting with God. Then imagine a world where you were part of God's dream for making the world the way that he wants it. And, and, and that because of time spent in prayer, you knew God's heart and knew how to represent his heart in the world. And then the world began to change because you had changed from the time you spent with him. Prayer is all about connection with God.